Hello friends, welcome to a new video of uh, data science using Python. Uh, so we are seeing the machine learning algorithms, uh, almost all uh, regression and classification algorithms you have seen. Now we are going to apply and uh, uh, use a novel approach of uh, the machine learning here that we term as the ensemble learning technique. So this ensemble learning technique is now we are going to introduce because uh, almost many different kind of algorithms we are going to combine together over here. So what is ensemble learning? Ensemble learning is a composite model combines a series of low performing classifiers with the aim of creating an improved classifier. Here individual classifier vote and final prediction label return that performs majority voting. Ensemble offers more accuracy than individual base uh, or classifier. So this methods parallelize the uh, algorithm by allocating a base learner to different different machines. Finally, we can say that ensemble methods are meta algorithms that combine several machine learning methods into single predictive model to increase the performance here. So basically, see, uh, we have seen the random forest algorithm where uh, it's coming under the ensemble learning category. What do you mean ensemble learning? So different kind of algorithms are combined together to form the more powerful model or similar kind of algorithm we are going to combine in serial fashion or in parallel fashion to create more powerful prediction model. So ensemble methods can decrease variance with the help of bagging approach. They can decrease the bias using boosting approach or improve the predictions using the stacking approach. So these approaches are used here in ensemble learning technique. Let's see how exactly it will perform the operations. Let's take an example first where the ensemble learning can be applied. So let's take a real example to build an intuition. Suppose you want to invest in a company XYZ and you are not sure about its performance though. So you look for the advice whether the stock price will increase by more than 6% per annum or not. So you decide to approach various experts having diverse domain experience. Okay, And we will take their suggestions. So based on their suggestion, we will decide whether the stock price of the company will rise by 6% per annum or not. So my survey predictions are like this. Employee of the company XYZ in the past years write for 70% time. Financial advisor of the company has write for 75% time. Stock market trader, okay, so his decision was 70% time, right? Employer of competition, his decision or his predictions were 60% time, right only. Uh, a market research team in the same segment, okay, they are having their decisions 75% time correct. And the social media experts, they are 65% time correct. So basically here we uh, see the financial advisor of the company and the market research team they are actually working in this area their predictions are pretty good and their accuracy is also highest. Now can I achieve more accuracy than 75%? It's possible if you combine all of their decisions together it's possible but the pre-requirement is that all of these decisions should be independent of each other and now how much accuracy is achieved if all these results are independent of each other then? Given the broad spectrum of access you have, you can probably combine all the information and make an informed decision here. In the scenario, when all six experts or teams specify that it's a good decision. Okay, assume that all predictions are independent of each other. So you will get a combined accuracy of 1 minus error of all. Okay, how it is? 1 minus 30%, 25%, 20%, 40%, 25%, 35%. If I combine all these errors together, the error will go on 0.07875, which I am decreasing from 1. So the combined accuracy will be 99.92125%. This is what highest amount of accuracy can achieve if all these results are combined together, which are independent of each other. So assumption used here is that all predictions are completely independent, is slightly extreme as they are expected to be correlated. Correlation should not be there and uh, the yeah, means independency should be maintained. However, we can see how, may, uh, how we can uh, be so sure by combining various forecasts together. Well, what exactly ensemble learning is not different than this technique. So we are going to combine results from different learners and then we are going to have the more powerful prediction model out of this data. Ensembling. So ensemble is the art of combining a diverse set of learners together to improvise on stability and predictive power of the model. In our example, the way we combine all the predictions collectively will be termed as the ensemble learning. Moreover, ensemble methods models 
can be incorporated in both of the two scenarios when the data large uh, is in large volume and when the data is too little so in both the cases ensemble technique will play one of the most important and vital role see this how it is done we have one prediction model and that prediction model again can use the data differently here again one more powerful prediction models are created and if i combine all together the most powerful prediction will be generated out of this so in this way uh, generally the ensemble in technique will work let's see more uh, useful and uh, simplified diagram here so i have a data for example which is containing a continuous output so i'll be applying regression algorithms on this particular data so data will be some part of data will be given to lasso or whole data will be given to lasso then KNN regression, SVM regression, random forest regression. We'll combine all them together in a meta algorithm and I'll find the average of all which will be the uh, prediction generated from this meta algorithm. This is what we call as the ensemble learning. Okay, so uh, we have talked about two things already in the first slide of this presentation that is bias and variance. Okay, these are called as errors actually. The error emerging from any machine learning machine model can be broken down into three components mathematically. These are three components like bias, variance and irreducible error. So bias error is useful to quantify how much on average uh, predicted values are different from the actual values. On average how predicted values are different from the actual values. That's what we when we use regression model we are going to have the mean absolute error for this. A high bias error means we have underperforming model which keeps missing the essential trends in it. And variance on the other side quantifies how the predictions made on the same observation different from each other. A variance, high variance model will overfit on your training population and perform poorly on any observation beyond the training. See the, the things in the form of a graph. Now, uh, so this is what we are having the data set. A red is the expected output and the blue dots are the predicted outputs now if you see this particular diagram first circles expected output are almost similar to predicted output or predicted outputs are almost similar to the expected outputs here they are matching when we have low bias and low variance fine low bias and low variance now if your uh, variance is low but bias is high so actual and predicted are having this error so too much difference is present there their internal relation does not change much but predicted and output predicted output and actual outputs are having high difference over there. this is what we call as high bias and low variance and if you go to low bias and high variance see this the expected results are uh, around the uh, predicted results as it is so they are also around but they are not interrelated to each other they are having too much variance in the data variability in the data that's called as variance okay and low bias and high variance and if you have high bias and high variance you can look at that too much differences are there accuracy will go till 40 to 50 percent only for uh, if you compare actual values and predicted values then too much differences are present in that this is how bias and variance are present third error which i shown there it was irreducible error irreducible error is just like outliers we have to delete this outlier directly from the code then only uh, this irreducible error can be reduced now, three ensemble techniques are used uh, to combine the machine learning algorithms together. These techniques are called as bagging, boosting and stacking. Bagging, boosting and stacking, they are using different different mechanism by which algorithms are combined together to form the more powerful model over here. Let's start with the first approach that we call as the bagging. Bagging stands for bootstrap aggregation. It combines multiple learners in a way to reduce the variance of the estimates. For example, random forest trains M decision tree. So you can train M different trees on different random subset of data and perform voting for final prediction. The random forest algorithm is the perfect example of bagging. So it contains multiple decision trees running parallelly. So your data is divided into multiple N number of trees and then N number of trees are generated and we are going to do the predictions uh, from all the trees and combine them together. Classification system will do the majority of voting in that case and regression system will find the average of all the predictors uh, trees generated there. So the so example of bagging approach is random forest and the extra trees classifier. See this, how bagging approach actually performs this. So I have the original training data here. This training data, okay, 
is the original training data present this training data is divided into uh, t different parts so d1 d2 d3 d4 onwards till dt these are the different uh, models created you had separated the data original uh, uh, tra training data separated like this then every data is trained to different classifiers second third fourth fifth in this way and every classifier will predict the uh, or it will be built okay so when you do the predictions every classifier will do the prediction on the new data present there and then all prediction which output is predicted by most of the classifier will be your final output so that's what we call as the majority voting so majority voting will be generated from the classifiers which we combine them together with the help of a bagging approach like combining algorithm in the parallel fashion is done over here okay so exactly the way in which random forest works bagging approach works here now before starting or going to the boosting approach i'll i am going to show you how exactly the bagging operation is controlled or done by uh, our computer system okay so let's uh, take this algorithm ahead uh, the first algorithm that is uh, i'm going to apply is the bagging approach now uh, in bagging approach i'm going to use one data set over here so let's use the data set okay so check it out so data set is uh, liver disease data set that i have downloaded from the uci machine learning repository i'll be using it let's train the uh, algorithm with uh, uh, data with a particular model and then we are going to apply the bagging approach here and then we we'll see how uh, the changes in the output we uh, can get out of it let's see this <coughs> so this is uh, liver disease identification so selector is the output variable so based on uh, this particular columns so these are the biological terminologies i am not uh, much aware about it but based on this terminologies we are selecting what kind of liver disease we have whether we have one or two okay so check it out only two classes are present over there and uh, these all values are almost continuous okay so there are continuous variables present based on that this categorical variable is the output it means that i need to solve this i need to build uh, the model based on this particular data set which will be a classification model okay so this is what liver data i can make use of it here so let's read it and uh, let's use a few more techniques to analyze your data in most effective way read the pandas now read your liver data see the columns here uh, check out read correctly perfectly and now i am putting uh, dropping the selector and remaining entries i am putting in x correct and if you want to see check it out these are my input variables yes output variable is selector which i am putting in y you see how many selectors are there one and two now in c bond uh, there is c bond package which is visualization package which we have seen in the last video in c bond there is a function called as count plot with the help of count plot function i can find how many counts are there for a respective classes with the help of a bar chart check it out so sns dot count plot y so you can find how many counts are present there see one and two are present but one are almost uh, equal to 150 and two are almost equal to 200 and there is a small difference there but they are almost equal uh, almost near to each other so that uh, classification system can uh, do the things correctly almost uh, we are having one solution on to it if you want to make them almost same so resampling is required that we are going to see uh, in some of the upcoming videos there but check it out if you want to see all the classes and their count we can use make use of the count plot to visualize it now let's split your data read the trend test split split the data by 25 percent test size which is default given over here now length of x was 345 length of x train is 258 which is 75 percent of 345 and remaining 87 entries will go to test data now for this algorithm i'll be making use of the decision tree classifier let's try our decision tree classifier and try to find how accurately decision tree classifier will build a model for this given data for liver disease identification okay so let's see right build the model with random state zero fit the data yeah so clf dot fit classifier dot fit x train y train the 345 trees are there by which the trees are generated okay now predict the data on remaining 87 entries y prayed okay that's what I have done. 
then from matrix i am reading the confusion matrix and accuracy score okay check out the confusion matrix uh, yeah out of 87 so these are matching parameters in 1 and 2 24 plus 31 so 5 5 55 entries are matching and these 32 entries are mismatching so it's low accuracy classifier yeah 63.21 percent entries are matching only out of 87 so accuracy applied on the lever data set by decision tree algorithm is only 63 percent okay now here comes the application of our bagging approach so in sklearn.ensemble we are having uh, the bagging classifier present inside it sklearn.ensemble import bagging classifier so bagging classifier is used to combine same algorithm multiple number of time in the parallel fashion and based on that the prediction system will work ahead so we have imported it and now let's build the classifier so which parameters are required so this is the object of bagging classifier here and uh, this is the algorithm these are the models that we have to combine together in the parallel fashion test estimator is equal to clf clf is the object of decision tree class above which i have given the base estimator how many parallel algorithm you need to create that is number of estimators n estimators equal to 100 so 100 trees i am going to combine just created like a random forest but here i am combining with the help of a bagging classifier so 100 decision trees are created with random set zero so your and my output will be same okay so that object is created 100 trees we combine yeah and then bagging classifier is generated here correct now train the algorithm with our given data yeah trained bagging classifier is generated okay the object you can see this and now on remaining 87 entry will predict clf back predict x test y predict is equal to this let's fit the confusion matrix oh okay yeah now let's see 26 plus 42 so here 68 entries are matching out of 87 is that 68 entries are matching out of 87 okay yeah 78 percent accuracy we have achieved by backing decision tree for 100 number of times it means that if you compare this 78 percent and with this 63 percent we are improved accuracy by 15 percent with the help of bagging classifier here so bagging which is used to reduce the variance of the data and based on that we can achieve more accuracy with the help of this approach of ensemble learning so in this way the classification systems are bagged okay so they are backed in a single algorithm and we are going to use that class bagging classifier for the further predictions and then print the confusion matrix so we can see high accuracy classifier is achieved and then we can do the prediction to find the lever diseases after that as we have seen already in the previous programs okay so this is how the approach of bagging is applied so bagging can be applied to all kind of classifiers almost so we have applied here to decision tree i can apply to svm i can apply to canon i can apply to random forest random forest itself is a uh, bagging classifier or i can apply the new base or i can apply to say many novel classifiers also even regressor is also present bagging regressor that also you can use it there so this is the way by which the bagging can be performed and we can improve the accuracy we can reduce the variance at uh, highest extent and uh, more accurate prediction models can be created with the help of the bagging system there okay so this is how the bagging approach performs now let's come with the second kind of approach is called as boosting the boosting algorithms are the set of low accurate classifier to create high accurate classifiers low accurate classifiers offers accuracy better than flipping of a coin so high accurate classifiers offer error rate close to zero Posting algorithm can track the model who failed the accurate predictions so they are less affected by the overfitting problem now there are three models used over here called as xg boost called as extreme gradient boosting and gbm which is called as gradient boosting machine ada boost is adaptive boosting so out of all i am going to show the last algorithm here how to make use of this boosting technique by which we can improve the accuracy of algorithm there okay let's see how ensemble technique behaves this is single algorithm that we have seen till and this algorithm that we have seen recently now data sets are divided and every different model is created for different subset of the data and then we'll have a prediction of majority of vote in case of classifier and regression will have the 
average of all the output generated by these models fine and now see boosting works boosting works sequentially not parallelly so data is given to model one more uh, predictive model is generated will be identifying the data then next again next then next this is called a sequential model uh, used here for ensemble technique termed as boosting now let's see ada boost classifier how this boosting actually happens ada boost or adaptive boosting is one of the ensemble boosting classifier proposed by your friend and robert shapire in 1996 it combines multiple classifiers to increase the accuracy of classifiers okay it's an iterative ensemble method iterative means sequential so adabus classifier builds a strong classifier by combining multiple poorly performing classifiers so that you will get high accurate accuracy strong classifiers the basic concept behind the adabus is to set weights of classifiers and training the data samples in each iteration such that it ensures the accurate predictions in unusual observations okay the machine learning algorithm can be used as a base classifier any machine learning it accept the weights on the training data see weights on the training data so what it does boosting is performed it is to set the weights of classifier okay and training the data sample in each iteration such that it ensures accurate predictions in usual observations now see ada boost should meet with the two conditions here the classifier should be trained iterate interactively on various weighted training examples in each iteration it tries to provide an excellent fit for these examples by minimizing the training error so see how exactly it works initially adabo select a training subset randomly it iteratively trains the adabo machine learning model by selecting the training set based on the accurate prediction of the last training okay so what it does it will trains and select the training set based on the accurate prediction of the last training it assigns the high weights to the wrong classified observation so that in the next iteration this observation will get high probability for classification okay so weight adjustment will be done which are wrongly classified in the previous phase okay the weight adjustment will be done so that next time good classification system will work and will get more accurate more possibility that they will get a uh, high accuracy in the predictions also it assigns the weight to the trained classifier in each iteration according to the accuracy of the classifier the more accurate classifier will get high weights this process it wait until the complete training data fits without any error or until reach to the specified maximum number of estimators to classify perform the vote across all learning algorithms you build same case now here it is expected that adabus classifier will work only on the algorithms which are possible to have the weighting on the training data so that weight adjustment is done and at the end highest weighted data is present which will be predicting good accuracy out of it see this this is how boosting is performed first of all we have the original data set then first model is created model 1 iteration 1 okay so predictions are done over here prediction on the same training data set now which are wrongly classified for them weight adjustment will be done updated weighted training data set here and that will be given to second model of the similar kind of algorithms on iteration 2 again prediction will be done so again which are wrongly classified their weight adjustment will be done and will go to the next step unupdated weighted and training set data sets then model 3 and in this way the sequential execution or sequential training of the algorithm on the given data will be performed by ada boost classifier and at the end we are going to have the highest predicted values which contain the great predictions output out of it so ada boost classifier works in this way boosting is a method by which we perform the ensemble technique sequentially so let's go for ada boost So for Ada Boost, I'll be using the data set called as Social Networking Ads. We have seen this data set uh, one time already. So I'll just uh, revise it here. What's the meaning of this data set? So in this data set, uh, these are the two input variables. So this data set is uh, just for showing the social networking advertisements. How many users or which user has purchased it? That is this one, for example, one, and which users have not purchased? So that. data set is created here out of it these are the two input fee important features age and estimated salary based on it output variable classification variable purchased is decided 
okay so i'll be using this technique and uh, i'll use one of the classifier and then i'll boost that classifier by ada boost methods okay read read data check out the shape 400 rows and five columns are there no missing values check the column names age and estimated salary are the input and purchase is the output so two and three these two columns i'm taking in x and y contain the purchase see this age and estimated salary column number two and three okay so four is not considered there by using i lock i have taken it in x okay x dot head i have seen the first five entries over here then how many classes are present that's zero and one that we can see by using np dot unique and set of y okay okay so i'm going to use the probability based algorithm like uh, new base in that so it's required to transform your data to uh, either by using feature scaling or by using the min max scaling that is normalization so describe that's why the ranges are different here 18 to 60 50000 to 150000 so i'm going to apply the min max scaling over here so importing min max scaler create the object of it fit transform it scale data and let's describe that you can find minimum value is 0 maximum is 1 okay fine now let's split the data in twin test split it yeah scale data i'm using 400 rows 300 and 100 uh, separation is done over here okay that's for 25 percent testing 75 percent training correct it's completely done and now okay this is already we are done but for this algorithm i'm going to apply the new base classifier so from sklearn dot new base i'm importing gaussian nb okay so let's see gaussian nb how it's accurately predict the data for this classifier is equal to gaussian nb train algorithm predict it and check the predictions okay almost we are having combinations of zeros and ones over here it means that uh, the prediction power is good for uh, this algorithm on the given data okay done then i created the result which is not required actually but okay now let's read let's uh, import accuracy score confusion matrix classification report okay so it's imported let's see the confusion matrix okay yes good so out of 100 i'm having 10 misclassifications here 90 are correct that is so i can consider 90 percent is the accuracy of new base classifier on this given data correct and if you're going to see the classification report uh yeah so recall is 96 percent and uh, for zero class and 78 percent for class number one okay so out of uh, 32 25 are matching and out of 68 65 are matching that's why it is 96 percent accuracy that i'm achieving correct fine it's 90 percent correct so it can build perfectly if you print it 90 percent accuracy you can achieve now let's uh, boost this classifier with the help of the ada boost classifier so from ensemble i'm importing ada boost classifier class ada boost classifier let's import it and let's create the object of it adb is equal to ada boost classifier classifier okay so for which classifier you have to do the boosting then how many estimators means how many sequential ordering of the algorithm you have to create that is estimators are given here 10 random state is equal to 0 let's build it correct now algorithm is built and now perform the similar operation for characterizations so adb dot fit fit this data training and testing data in this algorithm okay and then do the predictions on the remaining entries of 100 done and now boosting is done weight adjustment is done and at the end we are generating the results we have predicted the data on 100 values and now let's see what is the accuracy score here 93 percent yeah so we got almost three percent improvement in the original accuracy that is what the, the boosting does it is used to remove the bias from the data so bias is removed by weight adjustment and at the end i got the 93 percent accuracy here so if you print the confusion matrix see ha huh, here yeah. so here three misclassifications were there out of that is skipped only one and here seven were present six present there so 63 Sorry, 67 plus 26 that is 93 entries are matching so we can have good accuracy out of it by removing some bias removed in it but basically see uh, already the data set is having high accuracy 90 percent and only three percent improvement we are achieving but most of the time when we are accuracy is less than 70 percent and then if you are doing the boosting on that data 
drastic changes will happen so if the bias is available so that bias we can remove with the help of this particular boosting technique here and we can improve the accuracy of that particular classifier by the boosting method okay so this is how ada boost classifier can be used along with ada boost classifier few more algorithms are present in ensemble technique for boosting i just can check this one uh, this are the backing ha huh. gradient boosting classifier this one okay then uh, which are those okay sorry gradient boosting is algorithm xg boost is there but it's not present in uh, the ensemble xg boost is a separate package from where we can take it but boosting works in the same way they are having some small changes in the algorithm boosting algorithm always works in the sequential pattern so it creates a pipeline and based on this pipeline the results are generated so in this program i have added one extra thing that uh, we can make use of it in other algorithms also what's that see when the algorithm is trained i can save this classifier model that is the model of machine learning trained by the data set in a file permanently in a file permanently so basically when deployment of machine learning model is done then data is not required the trained model is used the trained model will be used imported in the program and that trained model will be used for the prediction but how to save that trained model in a file that i am going to show you see so for example i have given this output file name as adb.model adb dot model or i'll just delete this or i'll keep this output file name here adb dot model now see from sklearn dot externals package i'm having a job lib uh, package over here so inside the job lib i'm having a function called as dump so job lib dot dump here you have to provide the name of the class or trained model object sorry not class train model object in which file you have to dump it save it is mentioned here and compression method like nine number compression method i'm using over here so when i run this check so file is saved and if you go to current working directory okay see this this is the train model which is saved permanently in the system now check this very complicated <laughs> not easy to understand so this is a binary file created and now i can copy it from this system and i can store it another system whether it's windows or linux doesn't matter and there i can import it by using some different method and you can use for predictions also see how to do this one so from sklearn dot uh, externals import job lib and model is equal to job lib dot load and give a file name to it adb dot model so this model i will be reading and i am storing in the object model yeah load model uh, loaded model successfully so model is loaded in this variable now so i have stored by using adb and retrieved in another object and once it is loaded then let's see whether it can do the predictions or not can it do the predictions let's see so new is equal to scalar dot transform so i i am going to check now the person who is having 34 age and 150000 salary will purchase or not so i am doing scalar transform here why because the data is transformed while training the train data is transformed okay this is transformed data so this also transformed data that's why when you do the prediction we require to scale your data also okay so using the same scalar i am transforming this data and i am going to do the predictions on this data now new predict whether it purchase or not yes one is purchasing and i'll just take another entry like 27 and 120000 salary age is 27 whether is purchase or not not zero it means that model works perfectly you can save it we can reload it after reloading also the model will perform the operation perfectly successfully and we can get generate the result more accurately from this particular model okay so this is how we can save the model any kind of not only ada boost remember any kind of model we can save in this way and we can reuse that in another file by loading it by using job lib dot load okay that's it that's what the ada boost classifier is used or boosting technique can also be applied over here by this mechanism let's go for the third kind of technique which i have uh, added here it's called a stacking approach now what is stacking stacking or called as the stack generalization also is an ensemble learning technique that combines multiple base classification models predictions into a new data set this new data are treated as the input data for another classifier this classifier employed to solve this problem stacking is also known as the blending now stacking is similar to bagging but the difference is that bagging uses the same classifiers and stacking uses the different classifiers 
to perform the prediction. So the diagram which I have shown over here, this is actually a stacking. Data is divided into different different classifiers. Everyone will have their own predictions. And finally, the regression will generate the average of all and classification will have a majority of vote generated as a result out of it. This is how ensemble technique of stacking behaves. Now let's see how to do this stacking with the help of the sklearn. So I'm going to use the same data set there uh, what we have seen in the Arabus classifier and uh, let's check how to make the stacking. Stacking, sorry. Read pandas, read the file, check the columns. Now here I'm putting age and estimated salary in x, y content purchased, check 0 and 1 are present. Let's scale the data. Okay. And now let's split the data in trend test format. Okay. Split it. 25-25%. Now, this is very interesting to see that you can see on the screen. Yeah. So, I am opening all the uh, classes. So, I am reading all the classes of uh, classification. So, logistic regression, decision tree classifier, k neighbors classifier, Gaussian new base and support vector classifier. All the classes are imported from the respective packages here. Okay. And all of their classifiers are generated. How? Logistic regression is random state 0, so CLF log, CLF DT is for distant classifier, random state 0, uh, CLF canon with number of neighbors 10, randomly I have just mentioned that there, then CLF new base, Gaussian new base I am using here and CLF SVM where I am using the kernel uh, RBF that is radial basis function and random state is 0. So all of these classifier are imported and their objects are created by this method. And now I'm going to train all the classifiers with the same data. So you can check what is the output. Okay, so all the classifiers are trained with the same data all. So whatever classifier we have seen till all I'm using now in the same program. Why? Because I'm not going to use a stack stacking approach by which you can do the predictions. Now, after that, so do the predictions from every classifier. So I'm using logistic, decision tree, canon, new base, SVM. Okay, so their predictions input is same, only their object is different over here and prediction output is different. So let's do the predictions. Now let's see the accuracy of everyone. So check it out, same accuracy score function I'm using there by test and prediction data by the that particular algorithms into 100. Okay, yeah. Logistic 89, decision tree 90, Canon 93, new base 90, SVM 93. Okay, so Canon and SVM is having 93, KDT and NB are having 90 and log are 89. This logistic is a low performing classifier for this data. SVM and Canon are the high performance classifier for this data that we can find. Okay, let's check some uh, bit also. Let's make it polynomial kernel here. Okay, that's giving polynomial kernel and the number of neighbors for Canon will make 15. Okay, let's find that. Is there any changes? So, okay, classifier accuracy has reduced, <laughs> SPM can and not changed. So, let's make RBF, what are the good kernel which is used in SPM is RBF always, okay, done, fine. Till this, I have applied all the algorithms. Now, let's create a stacking model. So, to use the stacking model, we have a classifier whose name is voting classifier. This voting classifier is present inside the ensemble package. From ensemble, we can read the voting classifier and then Create the update of voting classifier by combining all the estimators together by this method. See, estimators equal to in the list form you have to mention a uh, list of tuples. So, this is tuple which contain the name of the uh, classifier and the object of the classifier which are used above. Okay, here which are generated here. That names I am mentioning the entries object, KNN object, NB's object, SVM's object. So, a list of tuples. I have formed as a estimators to this particular voting classifier. Okay, so let's import it and create the voting classifier. So five classifiers I have I'm using now parallelly for performing the voting out of all and which is which will give the results from the majority voting. That's why it is giving voting classifier. Fit? Yeah, it's fitted. Check it out. All the classifiers are fitted now in this data. And let's do the predictions on the same data. Fine. What do you think? What's the accuracy of it? So we got 89, 189, uh, 290 and 293. And if I'm going to combine and doing the majority voting, yes, 
93 percent the highest accuracy i can achieve from here is 93 percent fine check the confusion matrix yes seven misclassifications are there and highest accuracy 93 percent we can achieve we have achieved from combining all the things together so here i'm using the voting classifier because the output is classified format i combine five algorithms together and i've done the training and then the predictions when the predictions are done the algorithm which generates uh, the maximum output generated by the algorithms are used here in the voting classifier and we are having highest amount of accurate classifiers from all of this so this approach is termed as a static stack stacking approach of the ensemble technique so whenever we require in future to apply that stacking approach it's possible to apply it we can make use of these particular systems multiple number of times i'll just revise the thing which was in ensembling is a method by which you can combine multiple algorithms together to create more powerful model the three uh, approaches we have seen first approach was bagging okay where parallel algorithms are combined and with the help of bagging we can reduce the variance in the data boosting is used to uh, reduce the bias in the data where the algorithms are combined in sequential order and voting is to provide the more powerful prediction model where algorithm of different time are type are combined in parallel fashion and accordingly we are generating the results out of it so that's it that's how the ensemble learning techniques are created used in python's scikit learn so you just can apply all this on your data sets as per your requirement make sure that we have used only classifiers in this video you can apply the regressor methods also so we are having bagging regressor boosting regressor that is adabus regressor as well as the voting regressor also based on that average generated by multiple algorithms are taken and based on it outputs are generated that's from my side assembling thank you thanks a lot